under the rain in old San Juan, Puerto Rico, the birthplace of this famous cocktail known all around the world. I'm at the very place where it was born, uh, one of the two places where the allegedly was born, a few of the me at the Caribe Hilton. We're going to learn about the very makings of this world famous cocktail today, right here, right by the beach. Beautiful views as the sun starts setting right by one of the most famous iconic hotels of this area. So I'm Ariel with Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. And let me know, have you had a Pina Colada? Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Ariel with Urbanist. Nice to see you here. I hope I can... Am I audible right now? I hope everyone can hear me. Can everyone hear me? I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, let me know if you're able to hear me. Right now, beautiful views of old San Juan drinking pina coladas in the rain. Literally. It's actually raining over here. Um, Hey everyone, so let me know if you're able to hear me. I hope you're able to hear me right now. Uh, it is a little bit loud, so I was talking a little bit away from the camera, but I am drinking pina coladas at the birthplace of Puerto Rico, uh, birthplace of the pina colada in Puerto Rico, in old San Juan, right by the Caribe Hilton. And this is one of my favorite drinks. Well, I'm partly biased because I am Puerto Rican, but also because it's so tasty. It's the perfect combination of Puerto Rican ingredients all coming together in a cup. So what is the piña colada? Well, before we get into the history of the piña colada, let me show you the beautiful views of Old San Juan. We get to see views of Condado and we get to see views of Old San Juan right behind us. Behind us. Hello everyone, so that over there is El Condado, that's basically the trendy area filled with a bunch of resorts and hotels um, that now is probably the prime spot most people stay at if they're staying in a hotel. Right here is the Caribe Hilton and this is the birthplace of La Piña Colada, which is the pineapple uh, cocktail known all around the world and it was invented right here. We're going to learn about that history. However, that history dates way, way, way back. There is some hammocks right here on the beach side of El Caribe Hilton. The pool is right there. And the Caribe Hilton has its own little private beach. Now, this is open to the public. You can't really enter to the pool side. However, they let me in. I just uh, spoke a little bit English. was very polite, and they just let me in. Otherwise, the bar is open to the public. And look at the view. Now we can see a little bit of the remnants of the fort, the old Spanish fort that used to be here. It's uh, the remnants still of the largest Spanish fort ever built in the New World, dating back to the 1500s. And here is the beautiful waves right in front. Very rocky, very beautiful, and very wonderful. Oh, and I just feel so good. Uh, I set up here to sit down and relax, uh, but let me show you a little bit of views down here before we continue. So look at that, amazing. So let me sit down. Actually, let me grab this chair. So bear with me. Bear with me, I'm setting up my tripod, so to speak. <laughs> setting up my tripod right over here okay right over here so I where is Puerto Rico so Puerto Rico if you did not see the broadcast from a few days ago Puerto Rico is located in the Caribbean and it's the ent the grand entrance to the Caribbean it's the island right after Cuba and Dominican Republic then comes Puerto Rico and it was the very first island that Columbus bumped into in the second voyage in 1493. After then, Columbus um, enjoyed the island so much and he wanted so much gold and saw so much potential for resources that he ended up colonizing here. However, the man who fully colonized Puerto Rico was Juan Ponce de Leon and he set up a colony up in Capadra. But however, Capada was filled with a bunch of mosquitoes. So then he ended up coming to a place that was far more pleasant, 
a little bit less mosquitoes. And that was Old San Juan, which is right over here in front of us. Now, are things okay over here? They seem okay right now. I'm a little bit sad I was unable to show you the city tonight. Maybe I'll be able to show it to you on Friday, oh, on Sunday. So stay tuned. Let me show you over here. Be over here. So, Juan Ponce de Leon, you might recognize his name because he's associated with finding the Fountain of Youth. And he was the first European to have landed in modern day United States. He landed in St. Augustine in Florida after he colonized Puerto Rico. And that is old San Juan over there. So sorry for the blur, there is bad service in the island. There's not the best service here. So, the piña colada. First of all, what is this cocktail? Well, the modern day version is very simple. It's cream of coconut, pineapple, sometimes fresh, sometimes just the juice, and some crushed ice, and of course, some good old Puerto Rican rum. All mixed together, blended together to make this beautiful cocktail. Served in the cup because I, I took it to go. And yes, you can order cocktails here to go if you're in the resorts. So you can walk around and enjoy the beaches. Or you can have it to stay inside the bar so you can have it in a nice glass cup. However, the origins of this cocktail go way, way back before the 1900s. Actually, way back to one of my ancestors. So you might have heard me refer some uh, before that I have a little kind of fun fact I like to share with people who want to know about my family history. Well, according to my grandfather's family tree and in many Puerto Rican uh, households, it is traditional to carry, to write down a family tree and keep it throughout generations. And this family tree dates us all the way back to a man known as Roberto Cofresi. Now, Roberto Cofresi is a very known name in Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. He was the Robin Hood of the Caribbean. Yes, I'm directly related to a pirate. Uh, so, uh, a Creole pirate uh, from Spain lived here in Puerto Rico, had his entire family here, and he stole from the French, the English, and sometimes the Spanish, and took those goods and gave it back to the poor people of different towns like Cabo Rojo, Puerto Rico, and the modern day town of Cofresi, San, uh, Cofresi República Dominicana, which is in Dominican Republic. And yes, my ancestors, ancestors liked to drink. And you can still find a statue of Roberto Cofresi in Cabo Rojo, which is on the southeastern side, southwestern side of the island. However, how did the Piña Colada come about with Roberto Cofresi? Let me answer all your comments. Uh, the Tainos show him the way to Florida. Tainos used to steal the women of the indigenous in Florida. Yes, uh, Spanish, of course, were uh, guilty of many things. Um, Oh, 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 oh my god, uh, says uh, Donald, your ancestors like to drink. Hello, Will, beautiful island, many places to visit. And don't worry, we will be walking around a little bit more. I'll show you a little bit more of the beach. But before we go on the beach, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of this iconic drink. Hello, Gonza. Hello, Linda. You say it's beautiful. Hello, Roswitha. Hello, Marnie. Uh, Kay loves the shirt. Well, I wore this shirt on purpose. This shirt is a bunch of pineapples. Uh, hello, Papo, saludos, uh, Vivian, uh, so, uh, ta, vi, uh, ta mirando de Ohio, gracias por mirando, uh, Lucia, you love your beautiful island of Puerto Rico, used to go swimming right in front of these hotels, it's a very popular swimming area, uh, hello, Brian, cheers, and hello, Dora, and hello, everyone, let me know, what, have you had the piña colada, or what is your favorite tropical cocktail, it could be with Alcohol or without alcohol, it's okay. Either way it works. I'm of course drinking it with some good old Puerto Rican rum. So, as Roberto Cofresi was stealing from the French, the English, and the Spaniards, taking those goods and bringing them back to the poor people of Santo Domingo, of República Dominicana, and Puerto Rico, they, he, end up getting lost at sea one time with his men, and his men were starving. 
they needed food quickly. And they were about to mutiny against Captain Gofresi, my ancestor. And Gofresi had a huge long beard, similar to my beard when I grow it long. He had long curly hair, also black curly hair, similar to me. Uh, so maybe I got a lot of his genes. And the men were about to mutiny against Gofresi, uh, demanding for some food, demanding for something, some type of sustenance. Otherwise, they would be starving to death as they were lost at sea, running away from European powers, escaping persecution. So Roberto Cofresi saw that he had three ingredients inside the ship. They, didn't, they quite weren't food, but maybe if they were mixed together, could sustain his men. There was rum. The men were already drinking rum. They just wanted food. But at least rum, you know, made them a little bit, numbed them a little bit from the pain of hunger. But Roberto Cofresi had two other ingredients on his ship that weren't so obvious for food sustenance. The coconut, and he had the pineapple. Two fruits that come from here in Puerto Rico and all along the Caribbean. Two fruits that made the Caribbean world famous. Now there's two main coconuts in the world. There's one type of coconut found in Southeast Asia it's more that hairy coconut, and over here you find more that green coconut. Coconut dates back over 30,000 years, so it's a very, very old fruit. Or I'm not sure, you might consider it a vegetable. The pineapple, though, when it was discovered here in America, ended up becoming a big splash. So, Roberto Cofesi had pineapples, and they were valuable. And why were they so valuable? Why did he hesitate? to feed his men some pineapples as they were starving to death. One, pineapples might not have sustained them too well. Two, pineapples were very expensive. Because when the Europeans came over here, they end up falling in love with this fruit, the pineapple. And the pineapple was super, super sweet. They called it pineapple because it looked like a pine from the outside and the inside tasted mm, like a juicy, Juicy apple. Papo de Aguada, que bien, gracias por mirando. Diane is your second favorite cocktail. Hello, Sharon, you love my stories. I'm so happy you love my stories. Thank you for so much for loving my stories. I really appreciate it. If you love my stories, let me know. I know you like uh, watching videos where I'm walking around a lot, but I also love telling these stories about food. So let me know if you love uh, hearing these stories. So a pineapple, pine because it looked like a pine, apple because it tasted like an apple, pineapple. Perfect combination of two weird different different things that don't make sense. But it kind of looked regal, it looks so interesting, it looks so unique. So when the conquistadors brought back the pineapple to Europe, at the time Europe had very little access to sugar. The thing is, sugar cane came all the way from Southeast Asia. And back at that time, the reason Europeans started exploring so much is because they really, really wanted their hands on spices and sugar. Two things that were very highly prized in Europe, but extremely rare to find it around Europe. So they had to make a huge journey around the world to Asia to buy them or depend on the Ottoman Turks who they were at war with in order to get these very prized goods. So when they reached Europe, they were extremely expensive. However, when they found the pineapple, they found that they have access to something sweet and very, very cheap. Well, at least cheap here. However, bringing the pineapple over to Europe ended up becoming a very hard thing to do because in order to keep a, fresh, a pineapple fresh overseas, you will have to be very good driving over the seas very quickly, very efficiently, and getting it over there. However, once it arrived, the pineapple became the talk of the town. People love bringing pineapples to parties. People love the pineapple so much that they didn't even eat it. They just kept it 
right there at parties and brought it from party to party to show off how wealthy they are, how so high social status they are. Sorry, there was a little pulp. So they even started renting pineapples because you couldn't get so many pineapples and the pineapples weren't still being able to be grown in Europe. So people would rent parties, uh, pineapple for a day to bring it to a party and then they would give it to the next person the next day and then so on and so forth and the last person who could afford to buy the pineapple would buy the pineapple for tens of thousands of dollars. So pineapple was a big deal. And so much so that there's weird architecture all around Europe, especially in England, Scotland, uh, France, and Spain, where you see pineapples and these um, grand entrances to palaces. There's a huge architectural building that looks so weird, but it's actually a gigantic pineapple in Scotland. Search up the photos, I'll post them on the Urbanist group. The pineapples were a big deal, so much so that even in New York City and all around the famous cities of the United States, people would put pineapples right in front of their homes. They couldn't afford a pineapple, but they wanted to show off that they were cultured and knew what the pineapple was. So of course, Kofresi hesitated. He was like, wait a minute. I can't risk all these pineapples. I have to keep some of them. But he had coconuts. Coconuts were okay. No one really cared about coconuts. They were, they were fairly easy to find. He had rum, lots of it. So he decided, okay, let's use a little bit of pineapple a little bit of the coconut shavings and mix it with a little bit of rum. And according to legend, the very first piña colada was born. It was a proto piña colada invented in the 1600s. According to legend, this is not historically proven, this is legend, but this is a well-known legend in both Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. My ancestor invented piña colada. Or at least the proto pina colada. So what happened then? Well, pina colada continued to be the pineapples continued to be very expensive, and they would have been able to uh, continue making them. Roberto Cofesi did it out of desperation, and he ended up not getting mutiny because when those men drank that beautiful concoction of pineapple, coconut, and rum. They were okay. They were okay. They ran away from the European powers and made it back to the homeland. However, Roberto Cofresi, around the age of 34, stole too many goods from the Spaniards. And the Spaniards um, getting immense pressure from both the English and the French to capture this annoying pirate that was bothering them. He was captured and he was captured by the Spaniards, taken prisoner all the way to the old fort of San Juan, which you might see on Sunday crossing fingers that things are calm. A men with rifles pointed their guns at him and he was shot by firing squad. And with his death died the Pina Colada with him. However, zoom many, many years later to 1954, a man by the Mon Monchito Morero had an idea. He heard about this legend and he wanted to capture the essence of Puerto Rico in a cup. That story will continue as we're walking down. Mm. Uh, yes, Barrios, I am from Puerto Rico. If anyone's curious, I am Puerto Rican, 100% Puerto Rican. Um, right now where I'm sitting, after about 5 p.m., a bunch of these tiny little insects start appearing. They're not mosquitoes, but they're like these smaller insects that really stick to you. So just fair warning, as you're walking around, uh, you can, might come here and get 
stuck by a bunch of little tiny insects. I'm not sure what they're called, uh, but if anyone knows, they're all around my glasses right now. Uh, and let's walk down, we'll continue the rest of our story as we explore a little bit more of the grounds of the Caribe Hilton. Uh, so Kay, you say on the cruise ships, if you put a picture of the pineapple on your door, or wear a pineapple shirt or top, it means you're a swinger. Oh, that's fascinating. That might tie a little bit to our history today. So here is the Caribe Hilton. Caribe is a derivation of Carib, which were the, na the Native Americans who were constantly raiding Puerto Rico, annoying the poor Taino people um, until the Spanish came and the Tainos had much bigger annoyances. And hence the entire region was called Caribbean or Caribe in Spanish. So Caribe comes from the Caribs and this is owned by the Hiltons. The Hiltons established this around, I think, the late 1940s, early 1950s. However, the important part of our story is in 1954, inside the bar of the Caribe Hilton. Let me show you a little bit more of El Condado. Temperature today on the island is a nice, like, 80 degrees. It's very nice, very cool. Let's walk through here. Hermosa Vista, yes, Barrios, it is. Uh, my children will have gotten straight A's in history if you would have been their lecturer. Thank you so much, uh, Lauren. Yeah, I mean, I love making history entertaining. That's what matters the most to me. How is my Irish history? Oh, well, it'll get good. Uh, it'll get better once I am going to Ireland. Oh, well, stay tuned. I've talked about Irish history before in New York City. Pineapples are still a symbol of hospitality. Yes, they are. And also they're like a symbol of Hawaii, where a lot of Puerto Ricans were brought over to Hawaii to make pineapples, to grow pineapples. Hola, Carmen de Nueva York. Dang, why do you always show up when my battery is uh, about to die? Uh, <laughs> Uh, Patty, you're so great. Love hearing histories. Um, Lo uh, Irene, you love my stories. Um, Sharon, you need uh, showing my age. You may need to Google Gene London. Great kids show. You're a great storyteller like him. Oh, cool! I will do Gene London. Thank you for uh, that compliment. I appreciate it. Vivian is from Ay Bonito, another Sp uh, Puerto Rican pueblo, and the Puerto Rican like resort area continues way way down the island all the way to an uh, area called Piñones so it's pretty far down uh, and Isla Verde here is a remnant of the fort and cool Cofresi cool name too I love the name Cofresi couple bear medallas yes medallas is like the Puerto Rican beer um, it's like the Heineken of Puerto Rico Rosalyn, you're watching. I'm so happy you're tuning in. Welcome. Nice to see you here. And here is the remnants of the old Spanish fort. So I'll tell you a little bit of the history of the fort. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to go on Sunday, but this was a fort built by the Spaniards after being attacked a few times by the French and the English, and I think the Dutch also attacked a few times. And the Spanish wanted to protect uh, this island, which was the grand, the, basically the grand, grand entrance for Puerto Rico. And they built this huge fort that went all along the little islet of Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico is an island. Right on the very north of the island is, old, is a little tiny little island right next to the mainland called Old San Juan. And that is the mainland right over there. Think of Manhattan as respect to New Jersey. 
And this is the islet of San Juan. This is where the Spanish originally settled because it was a perfect place to secure this entrance to the rest of the island. And they built this huge fort all around the islet. So basically, imagine if the Americans built a huge fort around Roosevelt Island. That's basically the equivalent uh, of the Spaniards back in 1500s, around 1534. And then this ended up becoming the biggest Spanish fort in the New World and still the largest Spanish fort in the New World. However, the French were smart and they decided to attack the southern end of the island at San Germán. That didn't prove too successful because the French never ended up taking the island. The British held control, I think, for a few weeks, but never for too, too long. So the Spaniards stuck around. And this and Cuba were the final two colonies of the Spaniards. By the time of the Spanish-American War, the fort was still standing here. However, by the 1950s, after the Americans took control and Puerto Rico was rapidly developing... Oh, que bien! <laughs> so here's my cousin. <laughs> Hey! I'll be back! You're back! You're drinking a, a nice piña colada. Piña colada! So this is my cousin Larissa. Hey! Here. <laughs> We're having a great time here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. We are, we are. She added extra rum to that. No. Está todo bien? Yeah. Yeah. Sí. Okay. Good. Uh, so they end up bu building a huge fort all around the island. But by the 1950s, they wanted to rapidly develop the capital, San Juan. So they end up dismantling, unfortunately, 50% of the fort. Um, there's two main portions of the fort still standing, which is the um, San Cristobal Muralla and also the um, San, Felipe, El, San Felipe de Modo, which are the two main forts that you see in a bunch of photos and maybe see on Sunday. These are the remnants of the other parts of the fort. But we're not here to talk about Spanish forts. We're here to talk about something else. As the fort was being dismantled, a new cocktail was being mantled here at the Caribe Hilton. So let's go down here. Let's pay a visit to a Caribe Hilton. Hello, Glory. Hello, Gladys. Welcome. Daisy says, awesome. Lorraine says, welcome back, Larissa. Sharon, you can tell that she's a family member of mine. Yes, we kind of do look similar. Um, in 1966, my, I was in sixth grade. My grandmother took me to Puerto Rico. Uh, we stayed in her home in Ponce, and there was no highways. Yes, no highways. It would take a very long time to go from the biggest city, San Juan, to the second largest city, Ponce, which I was there yesterday. Here's a bar outside thing is you can find bars outside all around and here is the pool side let's walk around and sit down at one of the tables beautiful beautiful resort I actually would stay here I'm not staying here I'm just visiting but I would definitely stay here if I could The reason I'm not in Old San Juan is because I was going to rent a, a uh, Airbnb. However, due to the events that are happening in Old San Juan, I decided against it and staying with family more inside the island. <laughs> Lisa, uh -huh. you want to join me? Sure. All right. Let's find the seat over here. Can you hold this? Mm -hmm. All right. Be my camera woman. All right, let's. And it just rained. 
so it's very, very wet. But that's that's what you go Puerto Rico for. You're gonna get wet in Puerto Rico. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. See, see, I, uh, there's a chessboard, yeah. <laughs> Let's see who wins. Ex I can wear any side. Exactly, go for it. Okay, so we're right here. There's some side stuff playing. I'm, my pants are getting wet, but that's the point of Puerto Rico. You're gonna get wet either on the beach or inside the island because it's always raining. It's very moist and very humid here. 1954. Monchito, which was a bartender here at the Caribe Hilton, wanted to capture the essence of Puerto Rico inside a cup. And he had a challenge because these were the 1950s and there was tourists coming here in droves from America. As you can know now, go to places like Tulum, Cancun, or Punta Cana in, in Dominican Republic. Before any of those places were really popular, this was the place to come specifically to the Caribe Hilton because this was the premier place. This was basically the Waldorf Astoria of Puerto Rico. So Monchito huh, was serving enough, you know, Jack and Cokes. He was serving enough um, daiquiris. He was serving enough of uh, straight rum. He wanted to do something different. He wanted to capture the essence of the island. So he uh, referenced the old legend of Pirata Cofresi, my ancestor. He decided to try it, but try a little bit different because he wanted to first make it into a milkshake. People were coming here of all ages, so he wanted to make something he could serve to everyone at the bar as an alternative to your hard liquor or your beer. So he combined pineapple, cream of coconut, and some cherry, and also some half and half, and blended it all together with crushed ice to make the first version of the piña colada. However, there was a piña colada on the opposite end of the bar because that was the place where like kind of the families would hang out in, they would order like little food for the kids. But all the adults were going over there and then they were taking their piña coladas back to the bar and ordering a shot of rum or a shot of any other type of liquor and putting it in here and drinking this beautiful concoction. So the bartenders and Monchito decided, wait a minute, let's take the piña colada away from the kind of the food area and let's make it into a cocktail here at the bar. So they removed the half and half and it replaced it with some rum. And there was the very first piña colada, the original, invented here in 1954. But wait a minute. Why did it become such a massive hit all around the world? Why do you find piña coladas all around America? Why do you find piña coladas in Mexico, in France, in Japan? Literally, any resort you would go, you would find a piña colada. Well, it's because a lot of high-class people, from the very rich to famous celebrities, came right over here to the Caribe Hilton. And they fell in love so much with the piña colada that they would talk about it in songs or in interviews or they would uh, take photos, they would be taking photos by the reporters saying they're sipping this crazy exotic drink in the Caribbean. And hence the piña colada took some international fame. Already the pineapple was already famous, the coconut was already well known. Add some rum and you got yourself a globally famous cocktail. This is the piña colada, ladies and gentlemen. And Monchito, the bartender who invented it, has been honored as the official inventor of the piña colada here in Puerto Rico in 1989 when he served his very last one. Served as a bartender for many, many decades. And they continue to serve the piña colada here at the Caribe Hilton and all around Puerto Rico and all around the world. But if you want to have the original, you have to come here, the Caribe Hilton in Old San Juan. Can I bring the piña colada over to New York? Not this one, probably get old. I'm gonna drink this one right now. Mm. But I can bring it. I can make it over there in New York City. <laughs> 
Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Let me read up your comments. If you have any last, um, last minute questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I might be going live tomorrow in El Junque Rainforest, data permitting. Hopefully there's cell phone data in El Junque, which is the only rainforest in U.S. territory. The only national rainforest. So stay tuned. It's going to be fun. Uh, and also I'm going to talk about the mysteries of El Chupacabra. And then maybe Sunday I'll be able to go to a fort, crossing fingers. Animals native to the island, not really. Goats and pigs were not here. The only big animal here is... Oh, <laughs> the only big animal here is the mongoose. Sorry, my cousin was um, calling me. So basically not. There's lizards, there, there's the mongoose, that, basically that's it. All, every other mammal was brought over here by the Spaniards. Uh, nowadays you'll find uh, pigs, goats, you'll find, um, you'll find cows, you'll find horses, etc. And some side to side, and it is rainy, and there's no big crowds. So yeah, no big crowds. Uh, summer season is kind of the lower season for Puerto Rico. A lot of people come here more for Christmas time uh, because it's beautiful weather, and it's a great escape from the cold weather of the United States. A smart move for not staying in Old San Juan. Yeah, uh, I hope things calm down by Sunday. Um, press that heart button. Let's spread some good energy, uh, and hopefully, I'll be able to live stream from Old San Juan on Sunday, permitting that things are calmer inside the uh, old town. And there's farms in the middle of the island. Let's go to the beach, Despacito. There we go, I don't want to miss that. Are you going to go live at night? Maybe, uh, maybe, 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 I'll, I'll see. So thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. That was the history of the Piña Colada, first invented by my own ancestor, Roberto Cofresi. By legend, not verified in history, but what is verified in history is Monchito invented the modern day piña colada here. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Bye bye. Bye, bye. adios, te veo.